Welcome to South Point's Christmas service online, wherever you happen to be watching from today. Now, in just a couple of days, Christmas will be here. And like most of 2020, it'll probably be different. But you know what? Different doesn't have to mean bad. Honesty leads us to admit the reality that 2020 has left most of us, myself included, exhausted and weary in this Christmas season. And this is totally fair, as this year has been difficult for all of us to navigate, regardless of where you're at with Jesus. Maybe you're here just kind of checking out who He is. Maybe you didn't grow up with Jesus, or maybe you've been going to church since you were little. You know, my hope for our time together is to answer a nagging question that I bet all of us are asking this year. And it's this, in the midst of the weariness, how do you, how do I, how do we experience the joy and peace we so desperately need? Now, here's the good news to the answer of that question. It's actually right in front of us. You see how most of us celebrate the season, especially here in the States, leads us to five wonders that can bring joy and peace that we long for. So over the next few minutes, I'd like to remind us of those wonders in a practical way. So we're gonna go on a journey. The first wonder that we're gonna look at tonight is found in the lights that we often put up to celebrate the season. My bet is, is that your family and maybe you know someone that during the Christmas season, you drive around to look at lights. And if we're really honest, when we see Christmas lights at nighttime, there's something warm and fuzzy about it. If I was honest with you, I only have one memory with my biological mom when I was a little kid from Christmas, and it included lights. We were at my grandma's house and she was having kind of this Christmas party and they lived on a first ground floor apartment and they had this big Christmas tree. Now my grandmother and my grandpa, they used to put so many lights and so many ornaments on this Christmas tree. It literally was like a Griswold uh, lighting thing. And so I can remember I was a little kid and uh, they used to smoke back in the day, uh, but the tree was kind of at the entrance and then there was this glass patio door and it was nighttime and people were laughing and they were having fun. And I remember I remember I was laying under the Christmas tree and as I looked out from under the tree I could see the glow of the lights on the patio of the glass and I could hear the laughter of my mom and my family. It's one of the few bright moments where those warm and fuzzy lights reminded me of the goodness that life is supposed to have. You see, you and I get it. There's something broken about life. And here's what I love about the first Christmas. Did you know in the eyewitness account of the Gospel of John, John tells us that Jesus is the light and the life of man, and that this light shined into the darkness. 2020 has taught us that life doesn't always work the way that we want it to. But isn't it amazing that Jesus is the light of God's love that is meant to shine in our hearts. So as you look at the lights this Christmas season and celebrate them, let it be a wonder that God showed up in our broken world so that we would know that we are loved. Let's head on inside and we're gonna look at the second wonder. will welcome inside where we discover the second wonder that we celebrate, and it's the Christmas tree that we often bring inside of our home that reminds us of something that could bring joy and peace to our hearts. Now, I don't know about you, but I love real Christmas trees. I love the smell, I love putting it out. I like going to pick it out, but I've also had a fake tree before where it's just easy to pull it out of storage, put it up, and it's already got lights, and all you do is plug it in. So maybe if you're watching this and you just, you like and prefer real trees, maybe you just wanna type real in the chat, or if you go, no, I love the ease of fake trees, maybe you just wanna put fake in the chat. But anyway, there's a reason why that most of us here in the States bring a Christmas tree inside. It's because a Christmas tree is an evergreen. And what that simply means is, is that no matter what the temperature is outside, whether it's cold or it's hot or anywhere in between, an evergreen, as it says in its name, 
always stays green. And there's a reason why at Christmas, we bring an evergreen inside of our homes. And it's for this reason. It reminds us that God's promises are true and good and hold up in the midst of our pain and problems. It's kind of like the weather. No matter whether the weather is good or hot or cold, the tree stays evergreen. It's like that with God's promise. Matter of fact, at the very first Christmas, we see in the eyewitness account of the Gospel of Matthew, as we hear about the birth of Jesus, the angel speaks to Joseph in a dream. And he says, and he reminds them of a, of a promise that God made from a long time ago, that a virgin would be with child and he would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And as we sit around the Christmas tree, is where we usually begin the Christmas festivities on Christmas Day. It reminds us that no matter what kind of pain or problems that we have, that Emmanuel, God is with us, that he chooses to be present regardless of the things that happen around us. And his promises undo all the things that we experience. I was kind of thinking about this. My grandmother, I call her a nano. She passed away last Thanksgiving. But my nano, there was one thing about her that I knew always to be true, that she loved me regardless. Whenever I would go to visit her as a teen or when I was a kid or even as a grown adult, there's one thing that she always made me feel like. No matter what happened in my life, no matter where I was at, that I was always welcomed home. There was something about who she was and how she loved me that it didn't matter whether I got it right or whether I got it wrong, that I was always welcome and that she was for me. And that was a commitment on her part. And before you think that she was soft, my grandmother, she would tell you how it was. Whenever we would play cards, she would say, hooray for me and to the heck with you. And so as Christmas comes upon us and on Christmas Day, as you get around the tree, let's not forget that we celebrate around something that's evergreen because it reminds us that God's promise to be with us is true. So why don't we head over to the third wonder. Well, we've moved to the table. And the reason is, is that the third wonder is often found at this place. And the third wonder is the good food that we often eat for enjoyment in the season. I don't know about you, but every Christmas morning, I look forward to these amazing, awesome cinnamon rolls. I mean, they're the size of like, just like a Frisbee. They're so awesome. And it's like diabetes in every bite. I just love them so much. My wife makes them the night before and lets them rise. And then we have them as our Christmas breakfast. There's something about a good meal and family that you celebrate together. And you know what? That reminds us that, that we're supposed to experience goodness in life. Goodness reminds us that despite the brokenness around us, that God is actually for us and that he actually wants us to experience goodness. You see, at the very first Christmas, in the eyewitness account of the Gospel of Luke, Luke 2.10, it says this. It says that the angels showed up to the shepherds and said, we bring you tidings of good news and great joy for all people. And then a little bit later, it says this, that God sends on earth to men peace and his favor rests upon mankind. Goodness is like a radar signal that lets you, that lets me, that lets us know there's more in life than the brokenness that you and I experience. As I was thinking about the goodness of food that we're going to enjoy, and it reminds us of the wonder that we're made for more than the pain and the problems that we experience, I was reminded of one of the most memorable meals that I ever had. I was younger, I was probably 16 or 17. I had just gotten out of the juvenile justice system, and there was this family from church um, that invited me over for Thanksgiving. Matter of fact, I ended up marrying one of their daughters, and she's become my wife of almost 27 years. But I'll never forget that Thanksgiving. Um, I didn't grow up with a large family, I was an only child. And as we sat down for that Thanksgiving meal, the table was long and it was full, and there was all this amazing, delicious food. And 
kind of as growing up, I, you know, we didn't have a lot of money and when I was incarcerated, like food was important. So I had this plate and every time I would eat something and it would be gone, I'd ask for it and I would fill it back up. And I remember partway through the meal that everyone at the table was kind of laughing at me because I was going, mmm, it's good. But there was such laughter, there was such joy, there was such love. And there's something about a meal around the table that reminds us that even in the midst of all that is hard, and we can all admit that 2020 has been difficult, but that when we experience the goodness of family and friends and food, that you and I are meant for something more than all the bustedness that we experience. That at Christmas time, wonder number three is the goodness that we get to enjoy together. Hey, I wanna take you over under the tree for us to experience wonder number four. Well, I'm down on the floor next to the tree where we will spend part of our Christmas. And the reason that we'll spend part of our Christmas is where we discover the fourth wonder. It's found in the gifts that we give in honor of the season that we celebrate. We give gifts to each other because, well, God gave us a gift. It was found in Jesus. Jesus is the greatest gift ever given to humanity, whether we realize it or not. Matter of fact, at the very first Christmas, in the eyewitness account of the Gospel of Luke, it tells us in Luke 2.11, it says for this, for unto us a Savior is born. You see, God gave us a gift that we didn't earn or a gift that we didn't even deserve, but he gave it out of unconditional love. Part of the reason there's such joy around Christmas when we open presents and enjoy them and rip into them is because we don't get them because we deserve them or we earn them. We get them because someone loved us. And that's exactly what the birth of Jesus is all about, is that God loved us and he showed up and he was born in the frailty of humanity because he loves us as the greatest gift ever given to humanity because Jesus didn't stay a baby in a manger. He grew up and he lived a life that changed the world and he was nailed to a cross and no one put him there, he willingly went there and he was buried in a tomb. And just like Jesus didn't stay a baby in the manger, Jesus didn't stay buried in a tomb. On the third day, he rose and he conquered all the brokenness and the pain and the problem on our behalf so we wouldn't have to be defined by that. That is why we give gifts. It reminds us of the gift that God has given us. And this gift isn't found in religious or um, rituals, but it's found in a personal relationship with a person. As I was thinking about Christmas presents, I want to ask you this. What's one of the most memorable gifts that you've ever been given? As I was thinking about this, I remember a gift I got. I believe it was the first or second year that I was married to my wife, Stephanie. We lived in this little townhouse and we gave each other gifts and lists of things that we wanted for Christmas gifts. Um, and what I really wanted was a Nintendo 64. But I had a bunch of other stuff on there. Like I wanted some, some of these really nice basketball shoes. They were pretty expensive. And I wanted some nice gear and some other things. And so Christmas morning came and we opened up presents and exchanged them. And I liked all my gifts and I opened them and I was really thankful and it was just a really good morning. Um, but as I was opening my gifts and we got through them all, I realized that there was no Nintendo 64 under the tree. Now here's the thing. I had gotten everything that I had asked for and probably more than I actually deserved. And I was okay with that. And my wife said, okay, well, I'm gonna go make us Christmas breakfast. Why don't you go grab something from upstairs? And I said, sure, babe. And so I went upstairs and at the top of the stairs, can you guess what was sitting there for me? It wasn't even wrapped. It was a Nintendo 64. So I just started screaming and jumping and I was like, thank you, love. And I gave her a big hug. Now see, here's the thing. She had already given me amazing gifts. She didn't need to do that. She did that because she loved me. She went above and beyond. And that's exactly what God has done for us. Not because we earned it, not because we deserved it, but God gave his one and only son, Jesus, a savior to fix what we can't fix. As we look around the world and we ask what's wrong, well, if we're really honest, sometimes it's not just the world outside. Sometimes the answer to what's wrong in the world is us. There's a problem on the inside and a problem on the outside that humanity has not been able to fix since the beginning. 
And so Luke tells us that the birth of Jesus, we find one, a savior, a gift to do what we cannot. It's the greatest gift ever given to mankind, which leads us into wonder number five, the last one. Come on with me. We're going to sit by the fire as we discover that. Hey, I'm here in front of the fireplace, sitting in this chair. This is where we discover the last wonder, the last wonder at Christmas that brings us joy and peace in the weariness. And this last wonder is something that I bet you already know. Because right now I'm sitting here alone, but on Christmas morning, I won't be alone. Because at Christmas, you know what we do? One of the things that we do to celebrate Christmas is that we gather with our family. We gather with our loved ones that we love and that are meant to love us. You know this, and I know this, and we all know this, right? Christmas just isn't the same when we're alone. I don't know about you, but my guess is that many of you have experienced most of your Christmases with family. But I understand there are some of you here today that maybe this will be a Christmas where you're alone or that you've had Christmases where you've been alone and it didn't feel very good. You see, when we're alone at Christmas time, it reminds us of a truth that you and I, that every single human being is meant to be a part of a family. I've experienced this personally. I was probably about 14 or 15, and my mom had already passed away, and my biological dad had taken me to the police station and said, I hope you got what you wanted. And a little bit later, he said, you're no longer my son. I know what it's like on Christmas Eve and on Christmas morning to wake up and to literally be alone and to be undone. And in that moment, there's something that we realize that we are meant and made to be a part of a family, for someone to know us and love us unconditionally. And this is the truth of Christmas that we find when we gather with our family, right? Is that you and I and that all of us were meant to be a part of God's family. That you're meant to be a son or daughter of the Most High. But here's the thing about being a part of a family. Being a part of a family is love. And love requires choice, to choose to love. Because if there's no choice, then it's not really love. You know, on Christmas morning, a couple days from now, this room will be filled with my daughter sitting here and my wife and our cats will join us and we'll open presents and we'll laugh. And on your Christmas morning, my hope and my prayer for you is that you'll be surrounded with family that loves you unconditionally. Because the reality is, is that all of us are made to come home. And so today I wanna to ask you this question. Have you come home to God? You are meant to be his son or his daughter. And here's the thing, God will never force anyone to be a part of his family because that isn't love. To come home requires a decision that all of us must make for ourselves. I mean, you matter so deeply to him. I mean, so much that Jesus gave his life on our behalf. And here's my challenge to you, is would today be the day that you would say yes to Jesus? Not baby Jesus, because Jesus didn't stay a baby in a manger. I'm talking about the Jesus who lived this amazing life and loved people, and who willingly went on a cross, and who was buried in a tomb. But on three days later, he rose and he conquered hell on our behalf so that anyone no matter how alone and how undone, could come home to their heavenly Father who is waiting for you with open arms. And celebrating Christmas, we're reminded of the five wonders, right? That the love of God that made this ultimate sacrifice so that no matter how weary that we feel, that we would know that there's more. As we go through celebrating Christmas and we look at the lights, it's the light of His love that's meant to shine in our hearts. It reminds us that darkness is not the whole story. As we are around the tree, it reminds us of the truth that His promises are meant to encourage us and that they will outlast the problems and they are not our whole story. As we eat the delicious food on Christmas, that it reminds us is that His goodness that He provides is meant to let us know that the pain is not our whole story. As we dig into the gifts, 
that the gift of His Son is meant to move our hearts and remind us that our failures are not our whole story. And as we smile and as we enjoy our family, that we remember that we are meant to be sons and daughters of the family of God. And our brokenness is not our whole story. We see all of this wonder that I just described at the very first Christmas. We find this in the eyewitness account in Luke 2, 10 through 15. And it says, the angels showed up to the shepherds and we start in verse 10 and it says, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. And then he says this, what I've been telling you today. He says, I bring you good news of great joy that no matter how weary or tired we are, and he says, this will be for all people. I want to stop and say that some of you here today might be going, you don't know my flaws. Some of you might be going, you don't know my misfortunes. And some of you might be going, you don't know my failures. What I love about the first Christmas is the truth that Christmas reminds us, that there is good news and great joy for all, and no one is disqualified. And he goes on to say, he says, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. I mean, if 2020 has taught us everything, anything, it's that we can't control what's on the outside. And if we're really honest, as we've looked on social media and all around the world, if we're really honest, we can't even control what's on the inside. There's something broken on the inside and on the outside. That we are in desperate need of someone who can fix what we can't. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He is the Savior that we need. And this will be a sign unto you that you will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And then it says, the angel showed up and suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying this, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to mankind upon whom his favor rests. You see, God doesn't say peace on earth. He says on earth, peace to mankind upon whom his favor rests. God is for us. You see, there's a peace and a joy that we can't find in anywhere else, no matter how hard we look for it. So this Christmas, our hope and our prayer from South Point to you is that you would know that you are not alone and you are not undone. That there's a love found in Jesus that can free us from the weariness and it can give peace to our soul and joy to our hearts.